This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Thomas H. Prohl, President, New Jersey State Bar Association. Good to see you. Good to see you. Mr. President, uh, let people know what the Bar Association is and why you're so important. Well, we're the member organization for New Jersey attorneys. We have about 18,200 members at this point, always looking to build that. But we stand up for access to justice issues, fairness in the judiciary, and we're also the zealous advocates for judicial independence, particularly when the judiciary is under attack. We stand up and speak out for them as well. Is the judiciary under attack? Well, <laughs> <laughs> loaded question, I yeah. know. Turn the TV on every single day. And, yeah. um, you know, that's one of the unique features of the judiciary is they have ethical canons that they have to abide by. And so sometimes they can't come to their own defense. That's our role. And so we stand up for that third branch, that co equal branch of government, to make sure they're protected and, and they can decide cases and administer justice freely and fairly. And the connection between the Bar Association. And the Supreme Court is? Well, we often appear as what they call Mika's Curie, a friend of the court. We go in and we provide the guidance and wisdom of our members. And our members are very diverse from all types of practice areas. And so where an issue comes up before the court where it impacts access to justice or our mission statement, we'll go in and provide information and guidance to the court. So they and they ultimately make the decision, but we like to have them all the information and provide that to them when we can. So. Why a lawyer? Why a lawyer? You. Yeah. Oh, well. What is it, a trick question? Yeah, no. Come on, you get asked that all the time. <clears throat> Seriously, I do. why a lawyer? You know, um, I'll tell you, back in the 90s, I was in the Peace Corps. I was in Nepal. I was so sitting on a mountain. This. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> so I, um, my, and I had my master's in public health, environmental right. and occupational health. I had a trajectory of going into health and education, these sorts of things. And you may remember in the 90s, there was this very caustic political environment with regards to LGBT people. And I'm openly gay. I'm the first openly gay president right. of the state bar in 118 years. And I will say I became upset. And when I get upset, I advocate. I, I go after things. And so my goal was the goal of equality. And so what happened in the 90s between Don't Ask, Don't Tell and throwing people out of everything just because they're gay, it really got me upset. And it got me motivated to change the world for the better for my people. So with that, I changed my trajectory. I went into the law, and the rest, as they say, is history. But um, I helped found an organization, Garden State Equality. Great I've, organization. Yeah, and I formed um, the LGBT rights section with a few other uh, like-minded folks. And we advocated on marriage equality, the anti-bullying Bill of Rights. And with that, I had a, a co-interest in advocating in the law on many other issues, in particular environmental issues. So those all came together, and I ascended to the presidency that way. Marriage equality, how are we doing? Well, it's the law of the land, but you know, you can look down in Alabama and you see even the chief justice of the court <laughs> like, down there doesn't that? get it. Yeah, so um, you know, he's his own problem and he's got a lot of uh, issues going on there. But uh, in New Jersey, it seems to be going pretty well. I mean, there's always room for improvement, and I think um, you know, we look to advocate now on the minutia of making sure people are recognized and have their full rights. Mm -hmm. And so there's that. But talk yeah. about the environmental piece; it means a lot to you. Yeah, I uh, did environmental enforcement for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for about five years. I did that while I was going to law school. So it's a, you know, it's where my heart was. I was the president of my environmental group at my university, Emory in Atlanta. And back in the day, we started a recycling program, but they were going to build a uh, retreat, uh, a hotel a conference center in a retreat-like setting, and they were going to clear a seven-acre forest. And so I was a bit of an activist with that, and we went and had a funeral for the forest. We put a coffin together and stuffed some branches, went to the administration building, and then we also went around campus and did guerrilla theater of the Lorac, so, yeah, I am the Lorex. I speak for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. I'm also in charge of the brown barbalutes frisking about in their bar. I could go on and on. You, do, you remember the whole thing? Remember the whole thing, yeah. And so we would go around and, and act out the Lorax, uh, yeah. about a dozen of us, and, and we raised awareness of environmental issues. And I was also working at CNN at the time, in Earth Matters was the program, and they came over and did a story on the environmental activism of students in the 90s. And so they featured not me, but the group, and right. of course, since I worked there, I wasn't in the program, but yeah, so that's where I sort of got my start with environmental issues. I realized we have to leave this world to children, and so we just have to take good care and be good stewards of the environment. So. Let me ask you this. 
with the Bar Association. What do you see the role being with respect to educating the public about the role of the courts and the, often the, the misunderstanding that many people have about activism of the courts? Because we've had many legislators on. I've had interesting conversations with Governor Christie uh, about his perception of the role of the courts. And people will talk about the court is too activist. They're too engaged in public policy. Uh, they should be making public policy. It's not their job. You say? Well, you know, so the state bar does educate through its foundation. We have a foundation that does a massive amount of education around the state to the public. And so we provide them a lot of information about the role of the courts. And the, the courts are truly our guardians of democracy. Their role is there to call the balls and the strikes of the law. And when something goes a afield, they are there to set it straight. And I, the perfect example is marriage equality. You know. I went to the legislature to seek my equal rights and I had the door slammed in my face repeatedly. I then went to the courts and the courts understood that our constitutional equal protection of the law means something. And if you're going to treat one person one way, you got to treat other people the same way. That's what equality means. And so, you know, people talk about this activist court. I don't see that. I see a really reserved, restrained New Jersey Supreme Court that just calls the balls and the strikes. And when something goes off, they will set it right. And if the legislature and the governor don't deal with it, that's why we have a court. Correct. They just correct the errors. And they deal with what's not being dealt with. Yeah, I mean, so statutes, by their, left, uh, statutes by their nature are, are complex, and but they don't always answer all the questions. The court will sometimes fill in the gaps where there's a vagueness or something needs to be decided. Thomas H. Prohl is the president of the New Jersey State Bar Association, an organization that uh, plays a very important role in our lives in this state, whether we realize it or not. Thank you, Thomas. We appreciate it and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Appreciate it. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this.